the hell is this? Somebody must have spilled something. Somebody else should be getting me four units of O-negative stack. What the hell is that? Well, that's embarrassing. Hi guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are reacting to House MD season three, episode 16, called Top Secret. So if you like what you see here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I got tons of reaction videos to House MD, Grey's Anatomy, Scrubs, lots of other TV shows, and I talk a lot about different urologic conditions that you might find interesting or might be helpful to you. So make sure you subscribe, and I make new videos every Monday. That's amazing. No, it's not. It's not? I could play the harmonica with my nose. Make a penny come out of a child's ear, or any other orifice for that matter. Even the right circumstances could bring two women to simultaneous ecstasy. The right circumstances being their agreement to bill you on the same credit card. <laughs> what I absolutely cannot do is dream about someone I've never seen before. Well, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it can't happen. True. Do these kind of conversations actually happen in the happen. restroom? Well, maybe you didn't dream about this guy specifically. Right, just some other guy who looks exactly like him. No, you imagine some generic Marine, then you placed his face in the dream after you saw the picture. Sort of a coincidence mixed with a little deja vu. There's no record of him ever coming into the clinic, so I must have seen him before somewhere else. Fine, you've known him since Cub Scouts. More interesting question isn't what you dreamed, but why. I'm guessing you're, you're longing for either a renewed relationship with your dad or a new relationship with one of the village people. He's in the Navy, not the Marines. I thought your dad was in the Marines. The guy in the village people. Actually, he's only in the Navy when they sing in the Navy. The rest of the time, he's just in generic fatigue. <laughs> what? You brought it up. You didn't flush. I didn't pee. All right, so uh, just to give you guys some context here, he, House MD, had a dream about um, being in the Marines and being with a certain person in his dream, and that same patient is who showed up in his hospital today, so he's kind of trying to put that back together. But anyways, House is having some difficulty peeing. And uh, one, I don't know if men really have these like really intense conversations in the bathroom. And two, um, would you even notice if your guy friend didn't flush and point it out? I don't know, but clearly they pointed out for a reason. Being unable to pee once or twice, sometimes that happens. There's a lot of different reasons. Uh, in men, most commonly, it's due to a enlarged prostate. You, you can check out my video on reacting to the Kaminsky report where I talk about having a large prostate and having some symptoms like this. Also, House MD is a chronic narcotic user, which is another common cause of being unable to pee. You okay? Yeah, it's just a little too much coffee this morning. Were we walking you to the bathroom? I wish. Wilson was just in there. These guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so again, another bathroom reference. Clearly this is, they're trying to get at something here. He's clearly uncomfortable. So he may be at the point of what's called acute urinary retention. So acute urinary retention is the sudden inability to empty your bladder, which is accompanied by some suprapubic discomfort or lower abdominal pain, which is where your bladder sits. There can be a lot of different causes for this. We touched on a couple of them, which included narcotics or other medications that can make it harder for your bladder to empty, obstruction, which can be due to a large prostate to any sort of stricture or narrowing of the urethra. In women, it can be due to prolapse or something falling down in the vagina that's kinking off the urethra. And it can be due to detrusor underactivity, which basically means that your bladder isn't squeezing strongly enough. And this can be due to a number of different reasons. Very commonly, it's due to neurologic disorders, so problems where your brain and your bladder connection is altered. Or it can be due to having a long-standing disease like diabetes, which can cause the bladder over time to become less strong and squeeze less strongly. Also, if you're 
you're really constipated, that can contribute to being unable to urinate. So if you think about it, the bladder is right in front of the rectum. So if that gets really, really full, it can push on the bladder and make it hard for it to squeeze and empty the bladder. And other causes of being unable to urinate are sometimes if you've had recent surgery, the anesthesia itself can make it hard for you to urinate after surgery, or if you've had a recent urinary tract infection for some people that can lead to urinary retention. So clearly it's been a full day and he hasn't voided. He has, he threw that ice pack in the sink, which is trying to help relieve some discomfort down there. And he's taking more pain medication, which is clearly going to make it harder for him to pee. Uh, usually at this point, you're very uncomfortable and he looks uncomfortable, but I mean, you're like really, really uncomfortable at the point that you'd probably be going to the emergency room at some point soon. So let's see what he does. I need a prescription. I just wrote you a prescription. Well, bike it in. I need to fuse this in. No, you don't. We figured out where you met your Marine? What? Oh, that. I haven't really thought about it. You can't pee. You can't remember him, can you? I can't. He's pee. telling him he can't so pee. So stop taking the Vicodin. I want to pee and not be in pain. Why don't you go to sleep? I don't pee when I'm asleep. Maybe you'll dream about him again. Maybe he'll give you an address. I haven't peed in three days. I read that REM sleep is the brain's way of working out problems. Three days? Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, you lied because you want to avoid talking about your obsession. I'm not obsessing. Why don't you just ask him? I haven't peed in three days! You'd be dead. I'm not counting Wouldn't intermittent you? drips. You'd be in agony. I passed agony yesterday around four. These conversations between the two of them are so weird to me. So one, as a physician, you shouldn't be asking somebody who is your friend to write prescriptions for you. Uh, you should be seeing a regular physician who's managing your pain control, so you shouldn't be getting Vicodin from his friends. Alfuzosin is an alpha blocker, and you may have heard of other alpha blockers called Tamsulosin or Flomax. These things essentially work by relaxing the smooth muscle of the prostate, which sits right around the urethra underneath the bladder, and this can then make it difficult for men to urinate when it gets too big or obstructs the passageway from urine to pass. So these medications can help people who are having difficulty urinating help them urinate. And it's a very reasonable request for him to ask his friend. The fact that he immediately says you don't need it or you'd be dead, these are false statements. You wouldn't die from being unable to urinate per se. You could over time, if you were unable to urinate, that urine could back up into your kidneys and cause kidney problems. But again, you would end up coming to the hospital and they'd figure that out, that you haven't been able to urinate based on your blood work or your kidney function numbers. The fact that he's standing around, walking around, talking normally after three days of not urinating, I mean, that's not normal. You would be in agony. You would be in the ER writhing on a stretcher waiting for someone to put a catheter in. I highly doubt that a little bit of medication is going to help him get out of this sort of degree of urinary retention. So let's see what he does next. Still no relief? No relief. Just got no pee. If the pills didn't work, you may need a catheter. I didn't come here to talk to me mm -hmm. about my pee. What's going on? Yep, so next step would be in someone who has acute urinary retention would be to place a urethral catheter or a Foley catheter. So that is a small tube that goes through the penis and into the bladder. And so that is typically the easiest and most straightforward way to empty a bladder and achieve immediate relief. Oh, 
he looks super uncomfortable. All right, so that's a Foley catheter. It's attached to a bag. That's just some lubrication he's putting on the catheter. He really pops those pain meds like Tic Tacs. So he is clearly immediately feeling better after placing a catheter. And you can place your own catheter. In fact, there are people who cannot urinate for extended periods of time for multiple different reasons that we kind of described before. And they actually catheterize themselves. And that's called clean intermittent catheterization, which is what he did. If you get a catheter in the hospital, typically you will have a sterile space. So they will place special sterile gloves on. They will clean the tip of the penis or the tip of the urethra in a woman with some betadine or some soap, specialized soap that can help make sure all the bacteria are gone and place the catheter that way. But if you're placing it and you're going to remove it right away, you can do it just with clean hands and you know clean the meatus with some soap and water at home. So he placed it. Uh, and I'm not sure if he's gonna leave that in or take it out. I didn't see him inflate the balloon that goes on the end of a Foley catheter. So when you actually place a Foley catheter, it has this extra port where you can blow up a balloon so it won't fall out of the bladder after you've put it in. If you're interested in how to put a catheter in, I'm gonna link a video in the description that's in the New England Journal of Medicine so you can check it out and see exactly how a Foley catheter is placed. What the hell is this? Somebody must have spilled something. Somebody else should be getting me four units of O-negative stat. What the hell is that? Well, that's embarrassing. It's a urine catheter collection bag with a rip in it. What the hell does it look like? What? It's just urine. It's sterile. No one's getting me blood. Why isn't anybody getting me blood? You're bleeding. House, are you all right? Why are you even here? I'm always here. No, you're not. There's a reason. There has to be. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dream. Catheter fell out. <laughs> okay. So he clearly had kind of this crazy dream, which they've been cycling through this episode that he has some dreams. Uh, clearly he's wet himself, whether that's from the catheter leaking or if he's urinated on himself, I'm not really sure, but the one thing I would be worried about with someone like him who's been in retention for several days is what's called post-obstructive diuresis. And what that is, is when someone makes over two liters of urine when they empty their bladder with a catheter, they are at risk for post-obstructive diuresis, or they make over 200 cc's or 200 mls every hour for over three hours. And those people are, are at risk for having metabolic changes, meaning their sodium levels in their blood can change and that can cause some mental abnormalities or cognition changes. And so they do need to be monitored. Typically these people are admitted to the hospital, they get IV fluids and they get monitored with their blood pressure, their heart rate, and they get their blood checked every six to 12 hours to make sure that their electrolytes are not becoming abnormal. If a patient is really reliable and can keep up with their fluid intake and they have family members around to notice if they have some changes in their mental status, we might send someone home if they're really cooperative. Oh, it's like solving the case solved your other problem. There is no medicine like happiness, except maybe laughter <laughs> or rubber tubes shoved up your urethra. 
You cathed yourself? Definitely not that bad after the first, I don't know, nine or ten inches. The cath relieved the spasm as good as new. Of course. Just a minor spasm in a muscle you've been using multiple times a day without any problem for the past 45 years. Not a major side effect caused by the overuse of a particular narcotic painkiller. Yeah, that was my thought, too. So, no reason to think about cutting back on your use of that particular pill. Thank God. Actually, it was a triple dose of the good stuff that allowed me to finally get some sleep and solve the case. So... You know, in this particular person, Dr. House, he would be at high risk of going into urinary retention again because he does take a lot of narcotic pain medications. They described the catheter as relieving the spasm. It's not that your bladder is in spasm. It's either not squeezing hard enough or there's an obstruction from something in the pathway where the urine flows. Again, like I said earlier, it can be because of a large prostate, it can be because of a urethral stricture. I've actually made a video on urethral strictures because Johnny Knoxville had a trauma to his urethra, which resulted in what I can only think is a urethral stricture, so check that out as well. Anyways, I hope you learned something. Uh, this episode of House MD was really interesting and uh, Kind of a cool way to talk about urinary retention, but not entirely realistic. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out some of my other videos and always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.